Uh, in this video, I would like to practice some fundamentals with you. Um, as you can see, I've titled this video Fundamentals. Uh, we're still looking at chapter 2.4. So the basic idea that I would like to uh, emphasize or basic things in this video are, number one, to resolve into X and Y components. That's the one thing. And then the second thing is to um, write it in, write all, any answer or anything we have in Cartesian vector notation. So that's, those are the two things that I would like to practice with uh, a couple of examples here. So this first one, um, so what we want to do is we want to resolve this into its X and Y components. So let's start off with F1. So F1, if we resolve into its X component, um, we can see that obviously there is no X component here. Everything, or the, the, the force is directed along the Y axis. So my uh, F, let's call it F1X is zero. And then, of course, F1Y is 300 Newton. Okay? Now, if we take a look at F2, F2, if we say F2, let's have a look in the X direction, F2X, okay? What do we notice about this force is that the X component is going in the negative x direction, so we know that it will be minus 450. All right, and if we break this up, we will see that that is then my x component, and it is in the opposite direction to what we've selected as positive. We select to the right as positive, so it'll be minus 450 cos 45 degrees. Okay, so. F2 in the X will be minus 450 cos 45 Newton. Another way of writing it would be 450 cos 45 Newton. And then you basically draw it like that. You draw the arrow going to the left. Okay? Then F2 in the Y direction. Okay, we can even perhaps write it like that. Is what? It would be then 450 sine 45 Newton, right? Because we're looking at that component there and it is in the same direction as positive Y. So we choose Y positive in that direction. F2Y is then 450 sine. Or we can say again, similarly, 450 sine 45 Newton positive direction. Okay. So there we go. We've resolved it into the X, Y components. Now I would like to write each one of these in Cartesian vector notation. Let's have a look. Remember, F1, there's a bar on the top there, would then equal, I'm going to write there's 0 in the I plus 300 J Newton, which is then simply 300 J Newton. All right? F2 is what? It would be minus 450 cos 45 in the I, right? That one there. Plus, oh, I see I've forgotten F3, but we'll get to that now. Plus 450 sine. 45 in the J. Okay, guys, that is how you represent this force here in Cartesian vector form. So remember I asked, let us resolve these forces into the X and Y components and then let us represent them in Cartesian vector notation. What we need to see here is that here we have represented the forces in a scalar form. F1, for example, is 300 Newton. That's the, that's the magnitude of the force. 
And then the direction is that it is directed along the, the, the y-axis. Similarly, F2, the magnitude is 450, right? That's the magnitude of this, of this force, right? But then, if we want to obtain the, the scalar components, we carry out these calculations. And then if we want to represent this force as a Cartesian vector, then we write it in this form. Okay, I hope that's clear. And then F3, F3, which I have unfortunately forgot to do the, uh, to resolve in, in this form, we can just write it in Cartesian vector notation, which will be 600, because that is the magnitude of this vector, this force vector. And then how do we determine what the x component is? We multiply by 3 over 5. 3 over 5. Please go and study the, um, the triangle slope uh, representation under the scalar notation. Okay? So F3, the x component, will be 600 times 3 over 5 in the i direction. Right? And we know that it's positive because the component is in that direction. Then we need to look at the y, which will be 600 and we have 4 over 5 j. Okay? So please practice um, representing these forces in, uh, in their xy components. This is scalar notation. Then also represent them in their Cartesian vector notation. Okay, let's try another example. I'm going to take it from F to 9. Not going to do the whole one, but I'm going to take it from F to 9. I'm going to show you here. If it will zoom in for focus. Okay, F to 9. I'm just going to take the one that says F3 equals 600. So um, there's the point here, and we have this force coming down like that. It says F3 equals 600, 600 Newton, and we have 5, 3, and 4. That's the, uh, that's the triangle. So what you need to see with this, this type of problem, guys, is that this force acts everywhere along this line. Okay? So it's exactly the same as saying that this force is being applied like that, and we have 4, 3, 5. I hope that makes sense. So, if there is my x and my y, then we can... This is, this is known as the line of action of the force. And what we learned earlier on is that the force acts every, can act anywhere along this line of action. You can, you can move this force vector along the line of action. So what's actually happening is that we have a force acting in this direction and we can, we can work with it in this form here, okay? So the, the magnitude is 600 Newton. Guys, that's the magnitude, and then this gives us the direction. So if we say F3x is then equal to 600, 3 over 5 Newton. That's scalar form. That's in the scalar form. F3 in the y is 600, 4 over 5 Newton. Scalar form. Okay? Then what about Cartesian vector form? Very simple again. Please note how I write it. F3 with a bar is equal to 600. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a mistake. This should be negative. Okay, please take note, because that is that is a that is in the negative y direction. So we have minus 600, 4 over 5. Okay, the x component is positive, so that is 600, 3 over 5. So we have got 600, 3 over 5, in the i minus 600, 4 over 5. 4 over 5 in the J Newton. Okay? So hopefully these, uh, 
these couple of practice problems um, will help you in the future. Okay, thanks, cheers.